Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. Today I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful looking coral reef, an impressionistic painting, somewhat abstracted. We're going to begin by putting some white liquid medium down on the canvas. This medium lets our paint blend and flow. I'm using oil paint today, create another oil painting for you all. The canvas I'm using is a 16 by 20 inch canvas that has been gessoed with some white gesso. Didn't like how it turned out, so just gesso over it and paint a new, even better composition on top. I'm going to begin here by going back and forth between two different colors. I have ultramarine blue and Prussian blue. Using this Prussian blue, I'm going to create a darker section on the right hand side down to the bottom, kind of coming up and over to the top left, creating an L shape, covering a good portion of this canvas. This is similar to several other coral reef paintings that I've done in the past. And we're going to create a nice sort of glow near the top of the piece where the light would be trickling through the water. And then down below it needs to be darker so that it reads correctly. Given this is an underwater piece, we want some very full, rich pigmentation. Using a good deal of the paint, and you can see that I'm bouncing back and forth between the Prussian blue, the ultramarine blue, and that white liquid medium. I'm using a large two inch wash brush today to put this in quickly. That liquid medium just helps me to blend and I'm keeping a lot of the brush strokes very, very active and visible. The mixture of the blues with the liquid white forms a light blue mixture. few things of blue down here at the bottom. We're going to continue with some alizarin crimson and some ultramarine blue using a small bright brush. When the red hits that blue it makes a nice dark purple. It creates a lovely shadow back here where some more coral is happening in the background. And with my dirty brush, I'm just going to put this over in a few spots, somewhat randomly. Touch more of the lizard and crimson, and more of my liquid white and blue mixture all together, create more of a purple. That liquid medium, again, lets the brushwork flow smoother. And I'm going to just dash in, somewhat haphazardly, a darker shadow way up here at the top. Allowing the brush to kind of just dance and play across here, not being particularly careful. A bit more of that darker mix, create some streaks and some vertical lines now. Back into my ultramarine blue, touch more of the liquid white. and some long vertical strokes. We're going to be layering over some lighter pastel colors, darker colors in the background so they show up better. Lots of things happening in the shadows. My mixture has almost become a light blue mix again. I'm 
just dancing that brush along. I'll put a few highlights down here in this darker section at the bottom. Don't overdo it though, just a few. We don't want to kill all the dark. Speaking of dark, here's some Prussian blue, very rich, deep blue. Put some up here as well, create some darker structures. Do be careful with this color, it can bleed into the other colors very easily. Make sure that you clean your brush off with some paper towel. Maybe use a little bit of some brush cleaner when you're using this color. It will get into everything, so be aware of that. Touch more with liquid white. I have not cleaned my brush yet. And we're going to just soften a few things up here at the top. We're going to adjust this top layer a bit more as we go along. I'm trying to keep the brushwork very active. I don't want to become fussy with it. I want to keep things overall moving. If you find yourself starting to pick at one area for too long, move somewhere else and come back to it. Oftentimes, if we overwork a section, it looks worse than if we had just left it alone to begin with. When I'm editing these painting videos after the fact, I often wish sometimes I hadn't changed things. They look better before I make changes, so try not to pick if you can. Liquid white mix. Creating a bit of a texture change in the blue on the right. Very subtle effect. But now let's go for something much more bold. Grab some Namthal Crimson. It's a very bright, light red, touch of orange in there as well, color. And it is very bold, very vibrant. When it hits that blue, it's going to form sort of a purple. And that's going to be my shadow colors. But I keep going back to that pure pigmented color. Touch of the white in there, make it more of a pastel. Lighten it up a bit. The liquid white helps it to flow off the brush. Keep moving quickly. Very bold, bright color. I want this coral reef to really stand out and have a striking impact to the viewer's eye. And I think the red is a great way of doing that. That red just stands out, sparkles against the blue. And some down here. Here is some liquid white and then some more of the red. A bit of the titanium white added to that as well. One thing I'm going to keep doing is I'm going to work on a section and then I'm going to bounce over to a different section with my dirty brush. That way I keep varying the colors. As things mix together on my brush, I don't really bother to clean very much. I just grab some more pure pigmentation and go on to the next section. So you'll see I put dirty brush under a lot of these because I'm not cleaning my brush off. I'm going right from one section to the next. So all the colors are loosely blending together. Because I'm working in lots of blues and reds, the overall effect is sort of a purple. But I am changing the intensity by reloading my brush with pure pigmentation every so often. Quick little strokes for this using this bright brush. I am slowly working towards not having any of the white showing through. Touch more of the liquid white, it helps the brush to flow. If I get a good color on there, a good mixture, I'll grab some more of that liquid white. It'll lighten it up, but it'll keep it flowing. And I'm gonna dance this color up into the blue. As more of the blue gets on there, I'll grab some more of the white. 
keep your brushwork moving, keep it active, as always. Grab a bit more of that Lizard Crimson now. Touch more of the blue. Whenever I'm putting red, I'm counterchanging it with the blue. It's important to have the shadow colors happening. You need those shadow colors so that the lighter colors really pop. Mix together some liquid white, some cadmium yellow, and a bit of the permanent green. This is going to make a nice chartreuse yellow. That white softens the whole thing. And we're just going to toss this in in a few spots. Lots of color variation in coral reefs. We want to reflect that. If it blends with other colors, that's okay. Let's go back to that permanent green and cadmium yellow. The green is showing up and then more of the yellow. Touch of the Nanthal Crimson has got on my brush, and that's turned the whole thing a little more orange. Touch more of the Titanium White for blending. And we'll dance some of the lighter colors down here at the bottom. It's really important that you don't overthink this step. Sort of work in clusters, and then bounce across to a different part of the canvas. Work your way gradually from top to bottom. Touch more of the light blue mix in a few spots, filling in the space a bit more. Again, working on trying to cover up any areas where the white canvas is showing. And as my brush gets dirty, I just keep blending, quick strokes. I have my brush right now on a 45 degree angle, and that creates some sharper spires. Touch more of the liquid white. Okay, let's make some mint green. This is permanent green a touch of the titanium white, and a very smaller touch of the cadmium yellow, a more green than anything else, and a lot of the white. Very important color, as it is a beautiful complementary color to the red. Blue and yellow make green, red does not. So when you put the green next to the red, that makes the red sort of pop and come forward, and then the green really stands out against it. It's a good idea to play your complementary colors against one another. Touch more of the blue here as my shadow. Start to blend this together. Grab some permanent red. Back to my pure Namthal Crimson. Clean my brush off for this so I have some pure pigmentation. If I find if it's getting too muddy or too messy, I will go back and grab more of the pure pigment so I get something that is much more vibrant. Adding the white to things will sort of mute it. it will lighten it up, make it more of a pastel. So we need to have areas where we have strong pigmentation played against the more muted pigmentation so that the whole thing comes together nicely. Having this red sort of in the bottom left center is my focal point. That's the most important area of the piece, and everything else is going to be supporting that. Here I'm playing in some pinks up in here. There's a long seaweed or coral of some sort that's very thin and spindly going up behind this cluster of red in the center, and I'm going to put those in.
back to my mint green mix. I'll start to fill in more of this section here. Lots of titanium white there. You saw a big glob of that. Really want this green to pop against the permanent red we put down. And of course, whatever you do to one side, you want to bounce over somewhere else and put that in somewhere else. Clean my brush off again, and here is some titanium white with the alizarin crimson. Bit more of the namphal crimson now, but mixed with the white to soften it. We don't want it as vibrant as the center section. We'll play this pink in over here. Let's move to more of a purple as I've hit some of the blue. A lot of the mixing, a lot of the blending is happening right on the canvas. makes my life easier, it makes my job easier. I don't have to control exactly how each color comes out. As long as they're all roughly in the same family, we should be good. And we'll take some of that blue mix with our big wash brush, carve out some more of the blue, cutting into a few of these areas, covering up some more of the white. And just breaking things up a bit more. really cut in down here. Break that up a bit more. We can fill it back in in a moment. Just blending smoothly here, covering up anywhere where the white is showing through too strongly. Okay, back to my lizard and crimson. Touch of the liquid white, small bright brush. We're gonna put back in some of these Long tendrils, sort of reaching up like branches of a tree. I have a couple of photographs that I'm working from as reference material. I am not copying any one of them directly. I'm just using them as a very loose source of inspiration. Whenever you're creating a piece like this, it's a nice idea to look at some reference material before you start. And I've been looking at them and how things work in the light and the darks to kind of get an idea in my head before I started painting. Here's some more of the ultramarine blue, touch with that Prussian blue down there as well. General rule of thumb, you want to be lighter at the top and then darker near the bottom. Here's some lemon yellow, beautiful light yellow, love this color. I'm using a palette knife for this, just bringing it in. Let's grab some permanent red and we'll put that in down here as well. Ultimately, I decide to brush this out, but for now, we'll put it in with a knife. Good way to put in a lot of paint quickly. I felt like the left-hand corner was competing too much with the center, which is why I softened it with the brushwork, blended it together. It's important to work in layers, and we want to have a layered look, but we want to make sure that we keep the focal point in the center, and keep the interest where we want it, and if you have too much competition, it won't work as well. Blending together through here. Grab 
grabbing some of that blue and working that out. Touch more of the light blue mix. And back to my mint green, very important color in this piece. I'm just about ready to blend out the bottom left hand corner. First, let's make a few more touches over here. bringing up some of the darker shadow colors with that blue. Let's scrape off some of the permanent red here, get rid of the excess. Changing the shape here, and then I'm going to grab the ultramarine blue, and we'll blend the two together with quick brushwork, and that's going to create a lovely, lovely purple that is cooler in temperature, and because I've cooled off the temperature, the eye doesn't go directly to it. It holds down the corner quite nicely, but because it is cooler, the center red is the one that your eye is really drawn to. That heat pushes forward, and then the cooler colors down below don't overcompete with it. Kind of getting up into my yellow there a bit more, a bit too much. So we're going to try to adjust that. Pulling these down, making these a bit bigger. Blend that out. And we'll bring a touch of that lemon yellow on my brush. Lots of yellow here. Clean my brush off loosely. Need more yellow. And some highlights. Grabbing some of that liquid white there, and the mixture over there, purple and blue. Back to my lizard and crimson. Let's put in some more of these tendrils. I need them to be much more pronounced and forward. I was looking at it, and I thought they were just too spindly and too thin. I couldn't see them. They weren't reading thick enough and dark enough. So I'm going to grab a lot of that lizard and crimson and really just bring these out. They need to be there, really hold down that space. Back to my light blue mix. I'm going to soften the top of this. I think in hindsight, maybe I could have left it alone and it was fine. I'm going to go back in off camera and put in a little more of the Lizard and Crimson up here just to bring it back forward. I thought it was too intense and needed to be softer, but looking at it now, I could have maybe left it. But I do bring it back up a little bit more than I did. Here is some Namthal Crimson with the white. Bring back in that heat. There we go. Put it back so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm bringing in a bit of that permanent red as well. Lots of white there. Creating that pink color. And we're going to draw in some highlights on each of these longer lines that go up. Touch more of the red. 
One last thing that I did do after I turned the camera off was I grabbed some more of the mint green with my palette knife and I brought it in over on the right hand side. Needed a bit more green on that side. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this painting lesson video and I will see you all very soon for another painting. Thanks. Thank you.